Hi friends, welcome to all. In this video, we are going to discuss CCNA version 7 lab activity, implement DHCP version 4. Before coming to this lab activity, friends, if you like to get any CCNA version 7 online classes or any projects support or technical supports, you can contact our team using our website. Link you will get from the description below. And also, if you like to get these type of technical videos in future, consider subscribing. Also, don't forget to enable that bell icon near the subscribe button so that you will get notification message whenever we upload a new video. Okay, coming back to our lab activity. Uh, here we can see the topology. We will uh, design uh, this uh, topology in our Cisco Packet Tracer. Also, here we can see a dressing table and uh, we can see this addressing table is incomplete okay we will complete this addressing table also here we can see vlan table what are the objectives in part one build the network and configure basic device settings in part two configure and verify two dhcp version four servers on r1 then uh, configure and verify a dhcp relay on r2 also, we will go through this scenario. The dynamic host configuration protocol, that is a DHCP, is a network protocol that lets network administrators manage and automate the assignment of IP addresses. Without a DHCP for IPv4, the administrator must manually assign and configure IP addresses, preferred DNS servers, and default gateways. As the network grows in size, this becomes an administrative problem when devices are moved from one internal network to another. Yes, that's why uh, usually we prefer a DHCP. In this scenario, the company has grown in size and the network administrators can no longer assign IP addresses to devices manually. Your job is to configure the R1 router to assign IPv4 addresses on two different subnets. We will uh, go through this uh, note. The routers used to with CCNA hands-on labs are Cisco 4221 with Cisco IOS X release 16.9.4. Okay. The switches used in the labs are Cisco Catalyst 2960 series with Cisco IOS release 15.2. Anyways, here uh, we are using our Cisco packet tracer and even we can uh, select these uh, routers and uh, uh, switches. Okay. Other routers, switches, and Cisco IOS versions can be used depending on the model and the Cisco IOS version. The commands available and the output produced might vary from what is shown in the lab. Refer to the router interface summary table at the end of the lab for the correct interface identifiers. Here we can see the required resources. Uh, two routers, Cisco 4221, uh, two switches, Cisco 2960 series. Then uh, two PCs, uh, console cables uh, to configure the Cisco IOS devices via the console ports. Then Ethernet cables as shown in the topology. So here anyways, we won't use these console cables. Uh, we will access uh, uh, routers and uh, switches uh, directly using its CLI. Now we will go to the instructions. In part 1, uh, build a network and configure basic device settings. In part 1, uh, we will uh, set up the network topology and configure basic settings on the PC host and uh, switches. Okay, so we will uh, design uh, this uh, topology in our Cisco packet tracer. Here in this uh, topology, we required uh, two uh, routers coming to our packet tracer, uh, network devices, routers. Here we will uh, choose this uh, 4331. Here we cannot see that the 4221 series uh, router. So we will uh, choose this uh, 4331. Then we require the two uh, switches. Go to switches and select a 2960. Then we require two PCs. Click on engine devices. Then PC. We will rename all these devices as per this uh, topology diagram. Uh, this is a PC A. Here we have S1, this is R1, this is R2, here we have S2, and this is PC B. 
now we will connect these uh, devices so we will uh, choose connections copper straight through from uh, s1 fa0 slash 6 to this pc dash a then uh, from uh, fa0 slash 18 on s2 fa0 slash 18 to this uh, pc dash b then we will connect from r1 uh, g0 slash 0 slash 1 to this s1 fa0 slash 5 then from r2 g0 slash 0 slash 1 to this s2 fa0 slash 5 now we have to connect these two routers r1 and r2 uh, we can see they are uh, similar devices we can go for copper crossover even we can uh, use this uh, copper straight through uh, because we have the concept called mdix anyways here we'll use this uh, copper straight through connect to g0 slash 0 slash 0 to g0 slash 0 slash 0 okay just to be designed our topology uh, in step one establish an addressing scheme Subnet the network 192.168.1.0/24 to meet the following requirements. One subnet, that is subnet A, supporting 58 hosts, the client VLAN at R1. Okay, here I made a spreadsheet. We can see subnet A and the number of users are required 58 as per the instruction. Now we have to get the network address, first usable IP address, last usable IP address, its broadcast address, and subnet mask. And they are given this address 192.168.1.0 slash 24. Again, coming back to our um, instructions, here we can see. Uh, record the first IP address in the addressing table for R1, G0 slash 0 slash 1.100. Then record the second IP address in the address table for S1, VLAN 200. And enter the associated default gateway. Okay, we will do that. Just we will go to this uh, subnet to B, uh, one subnet that is subnet to B supporting 28 host, the management VLAN at R1. So here we will give this uh, subnet to B. Coming to our spreadsheet, to here we will have our subnet to B. Then the number of uh, users 28 host right okay and here uh, record the first ip address in the addressing table for r1 g0 slash 0 slash 1.200 record the second ip address in the addressing table for s1 vlan 1 and enter the associated default gateway also, we have this uh, subnet C uh, supporting 12 host, the client network at R2. Yeah. So, subnet C required 12 host. Subnet C, then the number of users 12. Okay, now we will update this uh, subnet table. Uh, here we can see subnet A number of users are uh, required 58. So we can go with the network address 192.168.1.0. Then the first usable IP address it's uh, 1.1. Then the last usable IP address and broadcast address. Here we will write this subnet mask first 255.255.255. To get this uh, 58. Uh, we have to borrow two bits that means uh, it to become slash 26 that is 192 okay so here the broadcast address is 1.63 and uh, we get last usable ip address it's one less than broadcast address now we will go to subnet to b and here we can see the number of users required 28 and uh, here we have seen the broadcast address it's uh, 192.168.1.63 so the network address for this assignment to be will be 1.64 also we can uh, write its uh, first usable ip address it's uh, 1.65 here we have to borrow uh, three bits 
so that we get uh, 30 usable IP addresses. Uh, so we get this up to mask like this. 224 and uh, it's a broadcast address it's uh, 1.95 then it's the last usable IP address is one less than this broadcast address yeah now coming to subnet C number of users are created 12 and here the network address it's uh, 196 and uh, first usable IP address is uh, 97, 1.97. Here we have to borrow uh, 4 bits. So we get this sub to mask as 240 here. And to broadcast address, it's uh, 1.111. And its uh, last usable IP address will be 110. Okay, here I just I copied our addressing table. Uh, now we will update this addressing table um, as per the instruction. Uh, here we can see subnet A. Record the first IP addresses in the addressing table uh, for R1G0 slash 0 slash 1 dot 100. Okay, we can do that. Here is a subnet A, and here we can see first usable IP address. We will copy this address. Then on R1 uh, G0 slash 0 slash 1 dot 100, we will paste here. Then it's a uh, submit mask. Yeah, actually, when I read all these instructions, there are some confusion, but uh, Record the first IP address in the addressing table for R1 G0 slash 0 slash 1 dot 200 uh, from this uh, subnet to B. Uh, we can see it's in the router R1 and uh, the sub interface G0 slash 0 slash 1 dot 200. Coming to our spreadsheet, uh, here we can see subnet to B and uh, first usable IP address. We will copy that. And uh, here we can see interface G0 slash 0 slash 1 dot 200 so here is the address okay then it's a submit to mask yeah then in submit c record the first ip address in the addressing table for r2 g0 slash 0 slash 1 okay coming to our spreadsheet here we can see submit c and here is the first usable ip address this address we have to assign to uh, R2 G0 slash 0 slash 1. Then uh, here, uh, submit to mask. Just I will copy and paste it here. Now, in this addressing table, we have S1 and S2. And here we can see the interface they given VLAN 200 and VLAN 1. So we have to update its IP address, submit to mask, and the default gateway. Next here, they mentioned to record the second IP address in the address table for S1 VLAN 200 and enter the associated default gateway. Actually, this should come in this uh, subnet to B uh, because uh, here they specified S1 VLAN 200. Even we can verify in our, uh, you know, VLAN table. S1 VLAN 200, it's for uh, management. Okay, so here we can uh, use the... Uh, uh, second uh, usable IP address uh, we, uh, from the uh, submit to B. Here we can see the first usable IP address. So here we will uh, use the second usable IP address that is uh, okay. Just I will copy and paste. It's a 66. And uh, here is its uh, submit to mask. Then it's a default gateway. Next, we have one more device that is S2 uh, for the interface VLAN 1. And we can see this S2 is connected with the R2. Uh, so we have to get the IP address from this subnet. Uh, we can see it's a subnet C. But in the instruction, I think they given something different. We will see that. See here we can see for S1, again they talk about S1. 
they did not talk about uh, you know i mean uh, uh, this s2 actually it should be like this i will show that this is not required here just i will uh, cut this then uh, this should be here okay then uh, here we can see r2 g0 slash 0 slash 1 uh, which is connecting to this uh, switch s2 so record the second ip address in the address table for s2 this is known for s1 so we can see its name is s2 s2 vlan1 and enter the associated default gateway so coming to this uh, spreadsheet uh, here we have to use the, the second usable ip address from this subnet c uh, it's here just i will copy and paste it's 98 then it's a subnet mask and default gateway it's here okay so our addressing table uh, is ready now coming to step two cable the network as shown in the topology yeah it's already ready attach the devices as shown in the topology diagram and the cable as necessary Coming to step 3, configure basic settings for each router, that is R1 and R2. Assign a device name to the router. These are all basic configurations. We can do it. No. Enable conf t. We will set the host name as R1. Then coming to R2, CLI. No. Enable conf t hostname r2 next is a disable dns lookup to prevent the router from attempting to translate indirectly entered commands as though they were host names okay we can do that you have to give this command no ip domain lookup coming to r2 No IP domain lookup. Next, we have to assign class as the privileged exec encrypted password. Also, we have to assign a Cisco as the console and a VTY password. And we have to enable a login. Then we have to encrypt all these plain text passwords. Okay, we will do that. First of all, we will go to R1 CLI. enable a secret as class then we will go to line console 0 we will set the password as cisco then login exit then go to line vty 0 to 15 that means all the lines password is cisco login exit then we have to give service password dash encryption Next, we will go to R2. Here, we will enable a secret as class. Then, we will go to line console 0. Password as Cisco. Login. Exit. Then, go to line VTY 0 to 15. password as cisco login exit service password encryption then press enter then create a banner that warns anyone accessing the device that an authorized access is prohibited okay we can do that that is a banner MOTD. You will give a message. So you can give unauthorized access is strictly prohibited. Uh, so instead, this is an example. I will give only warning. Okay. 
also we'll go to R2. Banner MOTD. So when you set in real time, make sure that you give a proper message. Next is a save the running configuration to the startup configuration file. Also, we have to set the clock on the router to uh, today's time and date. Okay, first we will set the clock, then we will save the running configuration. First of all, we will do it in this R1. And here they mentioned use the question mark to help with the correct sequence of parameters needed to execute this command. So we'll go to R1 and we will set the clock. We have to go to privileged exit mode. And here we can set the clock. Set. We have to set the current time. So it's a 10 0 0 colon 0 0. Then again, we'll put a question mark. We have to specify the day of the month. It's a 3. Space again, question mark. We have to set the month of the year. It's a July. Then we have to specify the year, it's a 2020. Now we will copy from running config to startup config, run space start. Default file name, startup dash config, yeah, just press enter again. Now we will go to R2 and first we will set the clock. For that, just to go to privilege exit mode, give the command exit clock set we have to set the current time 10 0 1 uh, 26 then a day of the month it's uh, 3 then month of the year it's uh, july then year 2020 copy running config startup config press enter again Now coming to step 4, configure inter VLAN routing on R1. Activate interface G0 slash 0 slash 1 uh, on the router. We can see which is uh, connecting to this uh, switch S1. Okay, we will do that. We have to go to that interface, right? So, conf T interface G0 slash 0 slash 1. And we have to give the command no shutdown. And here we can see the link between these devices R1 and S1 is up. Next is configure sub interfaces for each VLAN as required by the IP addressing table. All sub interfaces use 802.1Q encapsulation and reassign the first usable address from the IP address pool you have calculated. Ensure the sub interface for the native VLAN does not have an IP address assigned. Include a description for each sub interface. Verify the sub interface are operational. Okay, we will do this a sub interface configuration in this router R1. We will exit from this physical interface. Then we have to go to interface G0 slash 0 slash 1 dot hunter. Okay, this is a sub interface. Here we can see that. And here is its IP address and uh, submit to mask. So press enter. Again press enter. So we have to give the encapsulation. Dot 1Q. Uh, this is for VLAN 100. So we can give 100. Press enter. Oh. It's a dot 1Q. Yeah. Now we have to set the IP address. Uh, it's 192.168.1.1 and it's a sub to mask okay now we will exit oh we have to set a description also uh, so again we will uh, go to that interface we can press up arrow from keyboard so two three times you can press it until you get this uh, command interface g0 slash 0 slash 1 dot 100 or otherwise you can uh, type this command 
and press enter so we will set the description uh, we can see it's uh, uh, this for, for this pc right we can give a client client network okay now we will exit then we will go to the interface g0 slash 0 slash 1 dot 200 okay and first we will set the description no props so description this is for management okay also we have to give encapsulation dot 1q this is for vlan 200 and we will set the ip address coming to our addressing table here we can see its ip address we'll copy that also we can see its uh, submit to mask i will uh, give a submit to mask here 224 Next, we will go for the uh, native uh, VLAN uh, sub interface. So, just I will exit from this. It's an interface uh, g0 slash 0 slash 1 dot. Let me check our VLAN table. Here we can see native is 1000. So, we'll give that to 1000 here. Okay, then we will set its description. for native right so we'll give native also we will give a encapsulation dot 1q uh, 1000 and uh, for native so we have to give native and the instruction the specified and only to set the ip address for the sub interface okay now we will verify these sub interfaces are operational coming back to r1 we will give the command end and we'll give the command show ip interface brief and here we can see the sub interfaces we created g0 slash 0 slash 1.100 1.200 and 1000 and we can see the ip address we assigned so status up protocol also up now we will go to step 5 Configure G0 slash 0 slash 1 on R2, then G0 slash 0 slash 0 and static routing for both routers. Configure G0 slash 0 slash 1 on R2 uh, with the first IP address of a subnet C you calculated earlier. Okay, we will set IP address for this interface G0 slash 0 slash 1 in this router R2, which is connecting to this network, right? So coming to our addressing table, here we can see its IP address R2 G0 slash 0 slash 1. Just I will copy this address. And here we can see its uh, submit to mask 240. Okay. Coming to R2. Password Cisco. Enable password is class. Conf T, we will go to that interface G0 slash 0 slash 1 and we will set the IP address. It's here with its submit to mask dot 240. Then we will activate this interface, no shutdown. Sorry. Yeah. Coming to the next instruction. Configure interface G0 slash 0 slash 0 for each router based on the IP addressing uh, table above. Uh, that means so we can see the link between these routers R1 and R2. Okay, we will do that. We will go to R2. Exit. Then we will go to that interface G0 slash 0 slash 0. We will give a no shutdown command. Then we will set the IP address. Coming to our addressing table, we can see R2 G0 slash 0 slash 0. Just copy this address. And here we can see it's a subnet to mask. Yeah. Two fifty two. 
now we will go to r1 cli conf t we will go to that interface it's a g0 slash 0 slash 0 uh, then we will set the ip address here we can see its ip address 10.0.0.1 and we can see its submit mask no shutdown and here we can see the link between these two routers r1 and r2 is up then uh, configure a default route on each router pointed to the ip address of g0 0 0 on the other router okay we will configure this uh, default route first of all we will go to r2 okay we will exit then we will give ip route 0 .0 .0 .0 space 0 0 0 0 space then we can give its a next hop address it's a 10.0.0.1 the ip address of this interface g0 slash 0 slash 0 in this router r1 okay then we will go to r1 exit you will set the ip root okay here is the ip address and submit to mask then we will give its a next to hop address. It's uh, ten dot zero dot zero dot two. Now verify static routing is working by pinging R two's G zero slash zero slash one address from R one. Okay, we'll go to R one. Just I will exit, and here uh, we will give show IP route, and here we can see. The default route we set. Now we will uh, ping to this interface G0 slash 0 slash 1 in this router R2. You will get the IP address. It's here. Just I will copy it and paste here. Success rate is 80 percent. Okay, once more we'll try. Just press up arrow from keyboard and press enter. So success rate is hundred percent. Then save the running configuration to the startup configuration file. Okay, uh, we will do it. Copy running config startup config. We'll go to R two. Exit. Copy run space start. Now coming to step six. Configure basic settings for each switch that is S1 and S2. Assign a device name to the switch. Mm -hmm. Go to S1. Enable conf t host name S1. Coming to S2. Enable conf t host name S2. Then we have to disable a DNS lookup. We can do that. No IP domain lookup. Coming to S2. No IP domain lookup. See, next, assign class as the privileged exec encrypted password. Also, we have to assign a Cisco as the console and VTY password. Then we have to enable login. And we have to encrypt these plain text passwords. Yes, same like what we done in our routers. So, we'll go to S1. Enable secret class we'll go to line console first line console zero password cisco login exit then we'll go to line vty 0 to 15 that means all the lines password as cisco login 
then exit then we'll set a service password encryption okay also we will do it in s2 sorry it's a enable secret as class line console zero password cisco login exit and go to line vty 0 to 15 password as cisco login exit service password encryption Now create a banner that warns anyone accessing the device that unauthorized access is prohibited. Also here we have to set the clock. Mm -hmm. So coming to S1, we will set the banner emotery first. Message will give warning. Exit and we will set clock. Set. Uh, current time it's a uh, 10 24 00, 00 then day of the month 3 month of the year it's uh, July 2020 now we'll copy run start in the same way we will do it in s2 We will set banner MOTD warning exit, then we will set clock set then a current time okay, then a day of the month, month of the year. Then year it's a 2020. Copy run space start. Now we will go to step 7. Create VLANs on S1. Okay, note in S2. S2 is only configured with the basic settings. Yes, we done that. Create and name the required VLANs on switch 1 from the table above. So coming to our VLAN table. Here we can see VLAN, it's a name and the interface assigned. So first of all, we'll create this uh, VLAN with its name. Coming to S1. Conf T, we'll create to VLAN 100. Its name is uh, clients. Next is VLAN 200. Its name is uh, management. Next, we have a VLAN triple nine. This is for a uh, parking underscore a lot. Sorry, we have to give the name right. Then we have a VLAN one thousand. Its name is native. Next is configure and activate the management interface on S1 that is VLAN 200 using the second IP address from the submit calculated earlier. Additionally, set the default gateway on S1. Yeah, now we are in S1. So just exit. Then we have to go to interface VLAN 200. So we can see interface VLAN 200 change the state to up. We will set the IP address. So coming to our addressing table, here we can see S1 VLAN 200, we will copy this IP address. Here we can see it's a, a to mask and the default gateway. Sub to mask is here, 224. Just exit and set this IP default gateway it's 165 
right next is configure and activate the management interface on s2 um, vlan 1 using the second ip address from the submit calculated earlier additionally set the default gateway on s2 now we will go to s2 conf t we will go to interface vlan 1 and we will set the ip address it's your s2 vlan 1 we'll copy that address and here we can see it's uh, uh, submit to mask and the default gateway Two forty. Then we have to activate this interface. The next it set IP default gateway. It's one dot ninety seven. Then we have to assign all unused ports on S one to the parking underscore a lot of VLAN. Configure them for static access mode and administratively deactivate them. On S2, uh, administratively deactivate all the unused ports. Here, coming to our VLAN table, uh, we can see uh, in S1, these are the unused ports. So, these ports we will assign to this VLAN triple uh, nine, that is parking underscore a lot. So, coming to S1. We'll go to interface as a range. You can give FA 0 slash 1 till 4. So 0 slash 1 dash 4, comma FA 0 slash uh, 7 dash 24. Also, we have a 2 a gigabit interface, right? So G 0 slash 1 dash 2. Switch port mode as access. Switch port access. It's a VLAN triple nine. And we have to shut down. Now we will shut down all the unused ports in this switch S2. Here in this topology, we can see we used. Uh, FA0 slash 5 and FA0 slash 18. So, except these two ports, we will uh, shut down all other ports. So, we will give an interface as a range FA0 slash 1 dash 4, comma FA0 slash 5 we used. So, from a 6 till 17. Then we have FA 0 slash uh, 19 because 18 we used 19 till 24. Also, we have a 2 gigabit a third interfaces G 0 slash 1 dash 2. We have to shut down all these ports. Shut down. They given a note the interface range command is helpful. To accomplish this task with as few commands as necessary yes we used this range command coming to step 8 assign vlans to the correct switch interfaces assign used ports to the appropriate vlan specified in the vlan table above and configure them for static access mode we will do that here we can see we will go to s1 exit then we have to go to the interface FA uh, 0 slash 6. Okay. And we have to give a switch port modus access. Switch port access VLAN 100. Then S2 FA0 slash 18 uh, should be in VLAN 1. Yes, by default, it's in VLAN 1.
okay next is verify that the vlans are assigned to the correct interfaces and why is interface fa0/5 listed under vlan 1 because this interface fa0/5 is not assigned to any vlan and we can see this port is connecting to this router r1 and we have to make this port as trunk okay we will verify that we will verify the vlans are assigned to the correct interface so just to give end show vlan brief we'll maximize it here we can see all the unused ports we assign to parking underscore a lot and fa0 slash 6 is assigned to clients and this fa0 slash 5 is still in vlan 1 in default to vlan now coming to step 9 manually configure s1's interface fa0 slash 5 as an 802.1q trunk change the switch port mode on the interface to force trunking okay we will do that coming to s1 you will go to that interface conf t interface fa0 slash 5 then we will give a switch port modus trunk then as a part of the trunk configuration set the native vlan to 1000 okay we can do that switch port trunk native vlan 1000 Next is as another part of trunk configuration, specify that VLANs 100, 200 and 1000 are allowed to cross the trunk. Okay, we will do that. We have switch port trunk allowed VLAN, we can give 100, 200, 1000. save the running configuration to the startup configuration file then verify trunking status at this point what ip address would the pcs have if they were connected to the network using dhcp then this pc will get the ip address from this uh, subnet uh, from this uh, you know vlan 100 192.168.1.0 network yes so uh, just we will uh, save this configuration give end copy running config startup config then we will uh, verify this uh, trunking status show interfaces uh, trunk and here we can see port fa0 slash 5 mode is on encapsulation status trunking and we can see native vlan 1000 also we can see vlans allowed and active in management domain 100 200 and 1000 only now coming to part 2 configure and verify two dhcp version 4 servers on r1 in part 2 we will configure and verify a dhcp version 4 server on r1 the dhcp version 4 server will service two subnets subnet a and subnet c Coming to step 1, configure R1 with DSCP version 4 pools for the two supported subnets. Only the DSCP pool for subnet A is given below. Exclude the first five um, usable addresses from each address pool. Okay, we will go to R1 and we will exclude the first five addresses. Coming to R1, password Cisco, enable password is class conf t ip dhcp we have the command excluded address right so i will give a ex then you can press tab excluded address 192.168.1.1 then high address 192.168.1.5 so these are the excluded address again ip dhcp ex press tab from subnet to c 
so here we can see the first address just i will copy that then we have to give it a high address 192.168.1.1 97 98 99 100 and 101 so we excluded five addresses from each network next create the dscp pool use a unique name for each pool and also we have to specify the network that this dscp server is supporting also configure the appropriate default gateway for each dhcp pool and we have to configure the lease time for uh, two days 12 hours and 30 minutes and here they mention configure the domain name as ccnalab.com okay we will do this configuration first of all we will create the pool ip dhcp pool uh, we have to give a pool name uh, it's for VLAN 100 we will give VLAN 100 yeah then we will give a network it's 192.168.1.0 here we can see that subnet a network address 1.0 then it's a uh, submit to mask dot 192 presenter also we can uh, set its uh, default router default router it's uh, 192.168.1.1 also we can set its uh, domain name i will put a question mark and here we can see domain name yeah so it's a ccna-lab.com correct ccna-lab.com correct then uh, we have to configure the lease time for two days 12 hours and 30 minutes so let me try with this command lease and we can see it's an unrecognized command so we are able to set this uh, lease command here using this uh, model in a cisco packet tracer okay next is uh, configure the second dscp version for pool using the pool name uh, r2 underscore client underscore lan okay just i will copy this uh, pool name and the calculated network default router and use the same domain name and at least time from the previous dscp pool okay uh, we will do that in this r1 we will exit from this pool and we will create ip dhcp pool and here is the pool name all day copied it then we have to specify the network i will get it from this uh, table here we can see subnet c just i will copy this network address and here we can see it's a uh, subnet to mask Two forty, correct. Also, we have to set its uh, default router. We set uh, first usable IP address as its a default router, and here we can see that the IP address of this interface G zero slash zero slash one. Oh ho oh, oh. I'm sure it's a default router correct also we will set domain name it's a ccna-lab.com then uh, save your configuration save the running configuration to the startup configuration file okay just to give end copy run space start In step 3, verify the DHCP version for a server configuration using this show commands, right? So we'll go to R1. We'll give a show IP DHCP pool. 
so that we can see the pools we created VLAN 100 total addresses are 62 list addresses excluded addresses and here we can see pool r2 underscore client underscore LAN total address And actually, we excluded five addresses, but here it shows only two. But uh, it should show uh, the correct excluded number of addresses in the real time. Then we will give a show IP DHCP bindings. Show IP DHCP binding. So here we cannot see any address. Uh, Then we will give show IP DHCP server DHCP. We are not getting this command show IP DHCP server statics. Okay, uh, coming to step four, attempt to acquire an IP address from DACP on PC-A. Open a command prompt on PC-A and issue the command IP config space slash renew. Okay, coming to PC-A, we will go to desktop command prompt and here we will give that command IP config space slash renew. And here we can see IP address, submit to mask, and the default gateway. So once the renewal process is complete, issue the command IP config to view the new IP information. Test connectivity by pinging r ones g 0 0 one interface IP address. Yeah, here itself we have seen that address. So again, you can give IP config and we can verify it. So here is that. Now we will test the connectivity. So from PC A, we will ping to its default gateway. Here we can see its default gateway. Ping to default gateway, and we can see we get the replies. It's working. Now we will go to part three configure and verify a DHCP relay on R2. In part 3, we will configure R2 to relay DHCP request from the local area network on interface G0 0 1 to the DHCP server R1. Yes, that is called the helper address. So coming to step 1, configure R2 as a DHCP relay agent for the LAN on G0 0 1. Configure the IP helper address command on G0 0 1 specifying r1's g0 0 0 ip address then save your configuration we will do that configuration coming to r2 now we have to go to uh, the interface g0 0 1 password is cisco enable password is class conf t we have to go to the interface g0 0 1 and we have to set this ip helper address and we have to give the IP address, I mean the IP address of this interface, so G0 slash 0 in this router R1. It's uh, 10.0.0.1. We'll paste here. Then press enter. Now we will save our configuration end. Copy, run space, start. Now coming to step 2, attempt to acquire an IP address from DSCP on PC-B. Open a command prompt on PC-B and issue the command IP config space slash renew. We will go to PC-B, desktop, command prompt. Here we will give IP config space slash renew. And here we can see we receive the IP address. IP address 192.168.1.102 so to mask and it's a default gateway. Once the renewal process is complete, 
issue the command IP config to view the new IP information. Then uh, test connectivity by pinging R1's G0 slash 0 slash 1 interface IP address. Or even we can ping to this PC A. Anyways, we'll go to command prompt and uh, here itself we can see the IP address or we can verify using IP config. Here we can see its address. We can uh, ping to our uh, PC A. It's 192.168.1.6, right? Just I will verify it. Yeah, it's 1.6. press enter and we can see we get the replies it's working even you can ping to any interface ip address from this pc dash b or pc dash a it should succeed next issue the show ip dscp binding on r1 to verify dscp bindings yes we can see that the ip address given to this pc dash a and pc dash b go to r1 and uh, show ip dhcp binding and here we can see the ip address it's given to this uh, pc that is pc dash a and this ip address is given to pc dash b we can see it's a mac address type is automatic Okay. In this lab activity, we implemented a DSCP version 4. Now, dear friends, if you have any doubt, any suggestions, or if you like to get this uh, uh, configured packet tracer activity file, uh, you can contact us. Our website a link you will get from the description below. And also, if you like our video, give a thumb and share with all your friends stay tuned and we will meet again with the next video thank you